says there, be strong. Endure hardness, okay? Hardness. How do you endure hardness? You need to be harder than what's being pushed against you, okay? I'm going to get a little bit nerdy here right now and talk about engineering, okay? There's something called work hardening, okay? Two things, objects, that are rubbed together, the harder one will always cut into the softer one, okay? This is why we use ceramics and diamonds, very hard to cut metals, okay? Because metals, by and large, even though it's hard on you, is not hard to a diamond, okay? So if I take a piece of metal and rub it against your arm, it's gonna cut into you, because obviously that metal's harder than your arm. If I take the diamond and rub it against the metal, the metal's gonna be cut away because the diamond is harder than that. But there is this thing called work hardening. And this is why Christians need to be endurance runners, endurance walkers. In, we need to be focused on enduring things. Endure hardness. How do you endure hardness? You need to be harder. I'm not talking being hard-hearted. I'm talking being, being prepared, being ready, being strong, right? Be stronger than the hardness that's coming at you in the form of the affairs of this life. Be, be stronger than the hardness that is coming at you by the people of this world that hate your guts. Be stronger than the temptations that are coming after you. Now, there's a thing in engineering called a stress strain curve. I'm gonna to try to demonstrate it a little bit. Now, stress on the vertical axis here is basically the deformation force relative the area unit, okay? So that's how much strength is being put into the item. So as there's more strength, you also have strain on this bottom curve increasing as well. Strain is the apparent shape change. So as you add force, a material will change. It's pretty easy to look at an elastic, right? You hold it and it's this shape, and then as I add more stress, the shape changes, right? It gets longer, it gets thinner, okay? But there's this thing specifically in metals that, that hardens the object that is under stress. So elastic deformation happens in the first part of this thing. That means that I can take the metal, put a certain amount of stress on it, and it's elastic in that region, so if I let go of it, it will return back to where it's supposed to be. So you can stress something, it will return back. It'll stress something, it'll return back. It doesn't get any harder. The properties don't change on it. You just move it enough to kind of change the shape, and then it returns back to it. This is most Christians. Most Christians will go through a little bit of stress, and then they just kind of return back to normal and things get normal. They go through a little bit of stress and then they return. They're still in that elastic deformation stage. They will, for a moment, change shape and do things a little bit differently, behave a little differently, but ultimately, once the pressure comes off, they return back to normal. That's Christians, right? They never grow. But hardening happens once you take a metal past the point of elastic deformation and bring it to the plastic deformation phase. So this is what happens essentially once a metal gets pushed beyond that point that once you release it, it will stay there. And it will actually in the end be stronger than it was before. Work hardening happens when stress and strain increase to a point where subatomically and molecularly the item is actually changed. And here's how this works. <clears throat> when you take, let's say, a piece of Velcro and you flip it backwards, back to back, that's not the sticky part of it, right? You can slide it back and forth, it'll move this way and that, and it'll essentially, it'll go wherever you want it. At the elastic stage, that's what happens. You stretch these things, and then when you release them, they go back to normal. But when you bring a steel to a point where it is work hardened, it gets stronger when it's put to stress, when it's brought under strain, then what happens is essentially it behaves more like the other side of the Velcro. So as you pull it apart molecularly, you'll have the material break off, and then it becomes a different shape. So instead of these, these plates, these slip planes, being able to go back and forth and slide over one another as a stretching, essentially it'll actually change shape. And you'll have a plate going this way and a plate going that way and a plate going this way. And so it'll be just like the Velcro that comes together. And now you can't slide it because it's, it's stayed in that portion. All that to say this, 
Christians need to be work hardened. And work hardening comes from over a time period or over a, a stress or over a length that is brought to it, you become stronger as more stress is put upon you and it changes you. Christians change and grow and they become stronger as more stress is put upon them and they yield themselves to it. Do you know what that point is called where it crosses over from elastic deformation into plastic deformation? If you follow that curve, that's called the yield point. That's the point where the Christian stops worrying about returning to their old ways. Stops worrying about things got hard, but oh man, I'm so glad it's back to normal. Oh, this was challenging, but oh, it's good. But once the Christian gets to the point where the stress enters their lives and they're willing to heal from it, God's able to pull us a little bit farther we're to the point where we've grown. We're stronger. How do you endure hardness? By being stronger than what's coming at you. And every time more comes at you, more stress, more stress, more stress, you've become strained, you've become elongated, you've become different, but you've become stronger. And then ultimately what happens is as you get to this point, comes to the end, you've been pulled, you've been stressed, you've been strained, and then boom, it's a failure. It falls the thing, becomes zero in both directions. No stress, no strain on a broken part. So what's the practical application I believe about that? It's that pressure and stress will make the Christian stronger, okay? We need to be willing to yield ourselves to some troubles. Endure, you need to endure hardness by letting hardness come at you a little bit, okay? Endure it and go through it. Suffer these things. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So live godly so that you suffer more. That's how you yield yourself to God putting some pressure on you. Putting some stress on you. The next thing that comes to realize out of this is that you have a lot of Christians that stay elastic. They stress, they return. They stress, they return. They stress, they return. And then eventually they just kind of fizzle out. And all but Christians need to burn out, not fade away. We need to burn out, not fade away. Just like the graph. Just like the stress strain graph. We get to the point where it's enough, boom, we're gone. We're out of here. And if you look, 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 1, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That gives that idea of endurance, long suffering, putting up with some things. What are you doing? In season, out of season, popular, not popular. Whether it's the time, when it's the time to go to kings, you go fight in battles as a king, you do it, right? In season, out of season, when things are hard, when things are easy, you get into it. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. See that sound doctrine is something that you gotta endure? Endure hardness when scripture comes at you, endure those things. You know how you endure it? You yield to it, just like the just like the graph, right? You yield to it. It's amazing that God gives us physical things to represent spiritual truths. Yield to that thing. Endure sound doctrine. But they will not. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. But look at verse 7. Paul wasn't this way. In verse 7 he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but also to them that love his appearing. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And you know what the Apostle Paul is here saying? I'm ready to burn out. I'm done. The fight's over. I fought it. The battle's over. I won it through Christ. I have kept the faith unto the end. He's saying he didn't fear. Persecutions came. Struggles came. Trials came. He endured them. And he was made stronger as a result. He endured them. And that work that God put into him made him a harder believer, a harder Christian, a stronger person that could, by faith, walk in the next challenge that God has for them. And the next challenge that God has for them. And the next challenge that God has for them until God's like, that's enough. Come home. It's done. It's over with. Christians need to burn out. Don't be like David and fade away. 
Don't fall away from the challenges that are set before you. The next battle, the next war. Don't say, hey, I know it's the time that Christians ought to, but I'm going to stay home from this one. That, that's the first step unto fading away and falling into failure. You've, you've, you've made yourself elastic. You're just going to whip back to Brent in the same spot. And this is what happens. This is why when, when we need a sharpened sword... And, and why it becomes dull. It's because we're elastic, right? We sharpen it. We work, we work, we work, and then we fall back. It just goes back to normal. But if we work to the point, allow God to work in our lives, and we endure the next challenge, the next challenge, the next struggle, next thing you know, God has brought us into the point where we're deformed. We are made in His image. We are formed more like the Son of God. We are changed. We are transformed. We are growing in the things of God, and He can use us for greater things because we can overcome the next challenge and the next challenge and the slightest things won't knock us on our tail the littlest temptation won't run us through the mud we won't fall and succumb to the little things that we would have before earlier in our days but we got to yield to god let him stress us out a little bit let him let him put us through some trials let him make us harder so that we can endure hardness we can overcome when we are faced with but the Bible teaches, hey, David, at the time when he was supposed to go forward and do what was right, he stayed home instead. And his testimony suffered, and people in his life suffered, and it was brought to ruin. And the worst thing ever is he made God disappointed in him. We don't want to be like that. We, we, we don't want to let God down. We don't want to let our families down. We don't want to, we don't want to ruin things for other people in our lives. So what do we do? It's the time to run the race. Accept the challenge. Contend with the footman today so that we'll be prepared for the horse. Endure hardness today so that we can face harder challenges to come. And I promise you, harder challenges are coming. So let's get in the fight now. Get a manner down. Get consistent in it. Stick with it. We can be part of a group that's going to do great things, not part of the group that sits home. <clears throat> Let's everybody else fight for us. All right? Amen. Thank you, Father, for this.